Okay, yay, we're finally live. Okay, I had to figure this out because originally it was trying to get me over to YouTube and um, apparently through YouTube you have to have like an encoder downloaded to live stream, which I actually didn't know, but I was like, I don't think that's where I'm supposed to be. Um, so yeah, so I am here. And I am so excited to um, share all this information and do this little like master class for you all um, about how I sold out my first program. So I am outside also because my Wi-Fi at my house today has like literally not worked at all. Like it goes out every five minutes. So I wanted to be on public Wi-Fi so that I wouldn't have to worry about my Wi-Fi potentially like starting and stopping the broadcast like 20 different times. And I think it's kind of nice scenery, right? Like I kind of blend into the scenery here. Maybe not my purple lipstick so much, but you know, that's just me. So I am so excited and I can't wait to get into it with you all. So just for a quick introduction, if you don't know me or um, you need a little bit of a reminder, my name is Erin McKell. I'm a business astrology coach and I turn limiting beliefs into entrepreneurial empires through my unorthodox inside out approach. So what I do is I look at the inside of who you are in your business. I do that through astrology and I see like who you are. I, I identify exactly what your purpose is, exactly what your strengths are, exactly what your weaknesses are and help you to overcome those and build your business the way that it's always meant to be. Okay, so that is what I do as a coach. And essentially what I'm here to talk to you all about is how I sold out my first program in 24 hours. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my coaching journey. Just so you know, I am pretty new to the coaching game. I'm pretty transparent about that. I have probably been in the scene for like six weeks now, something around there. So not a very long time. Um, and yeah, so I am still totally working on building my business. I'm not somebody who's been around for years in coaching. I have been around for years in online business um, because I had a social media business before I did this, but um, I am not somebody who's been a coach for a very long time. So this has all been a very recent endeavor. Okay, so my first program, by the way, was also um, a 90-minute astrology intensive where I gave you a full birth chart reading and then also took that information and gave you business coaching based off of what we uncovered through the reading. So if you needed clarity around your business, um, around your purpose and your passion, I gave that to you and then we came up with specific strategies and solutions if you did one of my intensives as to how you were going to implement that in your business. And I sold out this offer, like I said, in 24 hours. Um, it was a really quick turnaround and I'm gonna tell you exactly how I did it. So, first of all, I got really clear on who I was as a coach because I started out like most, ask pretty much any coach, and I guarantee you they'll tell you that they started out cookie cutter. Um, and they started out as a cookie cutter coach, whether they're a business coach, whether they're a sales coach, whether they're a life coach, whether they're a mindset coach. Pretty much everybody starts out as kind of like, you know, the cookie cutter, basic kind of version. And that's definitely what I had. That was what I had on the table. That was what I was designing. Um, was a really cookie cutter kind of business coaching practice. And um, I really, you know, took a look at my offers and my interests, and I, I got really clear on who exactly I was and what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I took a long time to do that too. I, I went through a whole process of market research. I got one-to-one -one help and I'm gonna explain how I do all that. But I took time to get really clear on who I was. So I didn't just start throwing offers out there left and right and seeing what hit. Um, instead, I took time to really think about what I wanted to do in business and who I was and what I had to offer other people. And what I had to offer other people that was unique and that wasn't already out there. You know, I asked myself, what am I not seeing? What am I not seeing from business coaches? You know, what kind of skills do I bring to the table that most business coaches do not or any business coaches don't? Um, you know, and I really even did a lot of observing and, you know, looking at what people were putting out there, what was working, what wasn't working to do that. And, you know, looked really honestly even at my own skills and assessments because it can be really easy to think like, oh, this person did this, so I'm going to do this too. But, you know, we all have our own niches and specialties. And so you don't want to 
um, just do something if you if it's not your specialty because it's that person's specialty because your specialty is different and unique to you right and you're not going to be living up to your full potential if you're living somebody else's dream so that's a B is to get one-on-one -on -one help okay I think that is really really crucial to any business is getting one-on-one -on -one support any coach will tell you this and it's true because you can do as many group programs you can do you know as many like freebies and free calls and free strategy sessions as you want but if you're not really investing in your business and in yourself then you're not going to get anywhere and there's also a huge difference between what I can tell you in a group program where you're with you know sometimes 10 sometimes 30 sometimes 200 other people or other women versus what I can tell you one-to-one -one, right the help I'm gonna give you is gonna be personalized one-to-one -one. it's gonna be based on you and your business and your struggles and your clarity not just like a general praxis because I you know nobody can give one-to-one -one support in a group program or in that kind of setting or in just like a 15-minute strategy call because it's not gonna go deep enough to really actually uncover anything maybe a couple minor issues but nothing major and nothing long-term those are short-term band-aid solutions if you really want to grow your business and you're serious about it and you're ready to do the work and you're ready for it to be sustainable then you have to invest in yourself and that means getting one-to-one -one help it might not necessarily mean hiring a coach it could be a different sort of thing depending on what your business is um, and what you're trying to do but you know coaches are a great thing to invest in especially if you are becoming a coach if you've never had a coach and you're becoming a coach there's a problem <laughs> you you can't be here and never have had a coach and think you're gonna be a coach you know it's just like if I wanted to be a coach like a baseball coach let's say but I've never played baseball like that doesn't make sense you have to actually have done the thing that you're setting out to do and same thing with what kind of coach you are you know if you're a relationships coach what makes you a relationships coach like what is your expertise what are you actually bringing to the table if you've never had a successful relationship and you're a relationship coach then I, that's just not going to work. You know what I mean? You haven't actually done anything to prove that you know what you're talking about or I have any credentials. A lot of people think that the coaching world works like you can just go on a title, but it really doesn't because people are going to know and find out that you don't actually have any, you know, anything behind what you're selling. You know, there, there's no basis to your business. You don't have any background. You don't have any of these credentials. You haven't worked for years. You haven't studied. You know, you don't actually know your stuff. And that's why you have to work within your expertise. You can't just be, you know, a business coach if you've never had a business. You can't be a sales coach if you don't know anything about selling. You can't be um, a health and nutrition coach if you're not healthy and you're not eating nutritiously. Like, it's just how it works right so that so that's so important that you get this help you get really clear on this because you need to be this is how you get connected to your offers is through one-to-one -one help because a coach or you know anybody that you work with one-to-one -one is gonna be able to look specifically at you and specifically at your business and tell you what you need to do what you need to fix the offers that you need to be making the moves that you need to be making um, and, you know, they're going to have done it already and they're going to have been, you know, ten, in your shoes, but they're 10 steps ahead of you now. And so they're going to know what they're talking about and they're going to be able to help you a lot more than um, you can help yourself or that, you know, a group program is going to be able to help you. Not to say that a group program can never work or that it's never useful, but you can't use that on its own, right? Okay. So that's A. So you really, 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 I guess that's B. You really need to invest on one-to-one -one help. Like, I can't emphasize it enough. Okay. So next, in, in within all that, you need to get clear on who you're serving. If you're working with a business coach or a sales coach, I guarantee they're going to have you do some exercises around finding your ideal client. Um, if you're not familiar with this concept, basically an ideal client is who the ideal customer or client is or your business just like it sounds but it's that's what it is so you know who do you want to work with who are the people that you want to serve who are your products and offers actually made for because a lot of people make the mistake of just throwing these offers out there but if you were to ask them like you know who is this really good for or, you know who what kind of person and um, you know what kind of lifestyle or um, you know trajectory do they have like who can really use this offer 
and they don't know because they haven't thought about it because they're just making an offer that they think sounds good. They haven't actually done any of the work and figured out if this is something people even need. Um, so you need to get clear on your ideal client because you want to know who you're selling to because if my ideal client is, um, let's say, 40-year-old stay-at-home moms um, and I'm selling... Um, let's say I'm selling chainsaws, okay? That's not really a good market to sell chainsaws because that's not who's gonna be buying chainsaws. And even if I was, you know, even if I wanted to market a chainsaw, like I would have to do it in a very specific way to a 40-year-old stay-at-home mom versus a 70-year-old man who um, is retired and living at home or, you know, versus a 12 year old boy which I wouldn't say to market a chainsaw to a 12 year old boy but you know different client different kind of needs different even like is this something they want and also a different way of marketing and so you need to know who you're selling to and if you do, if you never figure that out if you're just like oh I don't need to do that I'm good then you're never gonna sell anything because you're not gonna even know who you're selling to so you're just gonna be throwing things out there that don't actually have a target every every goal right you have to have a target like this is my goal if you're just randomly shooting darts everywhere and hoping that one sticks, that's really not a good way to make things happen. Maybe one will stick out of like 200, but that's not a very high success rate. So you need to get really clear on your ideal client. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. There's a lot of questionnaires and stuff. Like I have a questionnaire I use with my clients um, to get them clear on one-to-one. -one. And it's something I think I'll actually be releasing um, in my next challenge, which stay tuned because that's coming up. Um, and yeah, so I just totally lost my train of thought there. Okay, so ideal client. So, and you know, you can talk to your coach about this if you have a coach. I guarantee, like I said, if you have a business or sales coach, they're going to ask you about this. And if you don't, excuse me, if you don't know or you've never done this kind of exercise, they're going to have you do it. So you need to go clear on who you're serving. And it should be a specific person, like a fictitious person you create in your mind. They should have a name. They should have a job. They should have a home. They should have pets. They should have interests and hobbies and favorite colors and things they like to do. They should be a real person in your mind, right? Like a real actual person. Every time you sit down to write copy or create new offers or even get on the phone with somebody, you need to be thinking about this person and what they would want. What do they want to hear? What's going to get them to buy? What's going to get them to work with you over somebody else? Okay. So that is kind of the gist of how you can do that. But like I said, there's a lot of other resources that exist on the ideal client. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about mindset practice because this is another thing that's really important. A lot of people think you can just skip over it. Um, like you can't play leapfrog in business. You just can't. It will not work. You cannot skip steps. Um, you can certainly go through some stages faster than others, but you can't just automatically leapfrog over something because you'll get caught later on and have to go back and do it. So mindset. You know, there's a lot of talk about this and, you know, different people will say different things about mindset. I look at mindset as just like the frame that your mind is in. So how you're thinking about things, how you're going about your day-to-day -day life, that kind of attitude that you have, the kind of confidence that you bring or don't bring. Um, you know, how are you presenting yourself to the world and how are you going out there? Are you thinking, yes, I'm going to get this deal. Everything is going well for me. I am making tons of money. I am getting my clients. Are you thinking in that kind of way or are you thinking in a negative way where, um, you know, everything is terrible and I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill and um, I just don't even like this offer and why would anybody buy from me? Like, what is your mindset? Which, you know, and it could be something in the middle too, but your mindset is how you're approaching life. You know, it's the way that you're, doing things in your mind and your mind creates outcomes because everything starts with a thought and then thought becomes the belief and then the belief becomes the attitude. The attitude leads to the action and the action leads to habits. Um, there's kind of a quote that kind of fully explains that that I can't remember but that's basically the gist. Everything starts in the mind. Everything starts in the mind. You know, every idea, everything, like the reason I'm sitting here today in front of you doing this is because I had an idea to become a coach, right? It started with an idea. It started up here in my mind with a thought, hmm, maybe I should become a coach. I've always wanted to do it. I think I can. I know about business. You know, like you have to get up here first because everything starts in the mind. So mindset. It can look different for everyone. I'm not somebody who believes in 
like, you know, a one size all approach to mindset, which I see way too many people doing, by the way, way too many people talking about mindset as a one size fits all kind of deal. And it's not different people have different things that work for them. Okay. How, and you know, figuring out how do you get your mind clear? What, what gets you in a good mood? Like what kind of things do you do when you don't feel good, you feel crappy and you want to feel better and you want to get back. And I don't mean better in like a self soothing way. Um, like Netflix and junk food kind of way. I mean better in terms of like actually improving your mood and like feeling confident and feeling like you're ready to go out and get all of the things. Okay. So, you know, think about what those things are and even notice the things that you do. You know, do you tend to go work out when you feel stressed? Do you like to meditate? You know, do you enjoy yoga? Um, how do you feel about journaling? Um, you know, there's all kinds of things like that, that, uh, are in the mindset realm, but different people gravitate towards different things. And there's not one that's right and one that's wrong. Um, you know, I definitely think you can do several, but you know, ask yourself the things that are most effective for you because um, different things are going to be more effective for different people. So, you know, journaling might not work at all for you and it might work for the next person. Um, but meditation, man, that just might be your jam. So, and try different things on. You know, if you don't know, if you're like, I really don't know what kind of mindset stuff I like to do, try some things out. You know, go to a yoga class. You know, try to meditate for five or ten minutes every morning. Um, you know, listen even to uh, like relaxing music. Do something like go on a hike or, you know, something that's kind of like in nature. You know, go work out. Go and do like a new workout class. Um, you know, you can even cook and like cook yourself like a healthy meal or something like that. If you enjoy something more creative, you could paint, you could draw. Um, you know, there's so many different activities that you can do that are good for you, the mindset and good for your mind and are going to help to get you in that positive frame of mind. Ideally then from that, you should develop what we call mindset practice, which is like something that you do usually every day, always consistently. A lot of times people do it in the morning before they start working because it gets their mind right. So, you know, you want to have something you do every single day or a couple, a combination of a couple things and that you can go to whenever you need to reset your mindset. So again, you know, it could be journaling, could be meditation, could be yoga, um, it could be painting, it could be cooking, it could be going for a walk, whatever, whatever it is for you. And, you know, figure out what those things are. Um, I would definitely say almost, I do, however, think, even though I don't believe in a one size fits all approach, I do think journaling and meditation are specifically powerful and something that everyone should at least try. Um, you know, and different journaling things might work for you. Like, um, for a long time, I was really resistant to journaling. And actually, um, Rachel Abbott, who's really awesome, she actually recommended to me that I start gratitude journaling. Um, and like writing down five things I'm grateful for. And it worked for me so well because I felt like I was connected to the journaling experience. I wasn't like overthinking it and feeling like I had to write 10 pages. And it also just made me think about the things that I have and the things that I'm grateful for and that I don't need to be so worried about, you know, what's coming and what's next and all of that. Like I can just live in the present moment and enjoy what's going on right now. Okay. So mindset practice, that is so important. Okay. Um, all right, now let's talk a little bit about market research. So market research, if you haven't heard this term, it basically just means, and any business, this is a thing, it means testing the market, looking at what the market wants, You know, what kind of things, what kind of products, what things are people willing to buy and willing to invest in, and what things do they need? What kind of needs do they have that aren't being met? So this is where you know you need to be clear on your ideal client because you don't want to be doing market research with people who are not your ideal client because those are people that you're not going to work with. So why would you care what they have to say? <laughs> not in that kind of way, but in the sense of like, they're, that's not going to do anything for your business and you understanding anything. Um, but doing market research is important for a couple of reasons. A, you're getting yourself out there. So um, you know, you're, you're putting yourself out and, you know, doing the research and through that though, people are going to start to see you and recognize you and know you and all that great stuff. Um, okay. And then the second part of that is that it actually gives you an opportunity to test out your skills because you're going to have to actually market the market research. You're going to have to conduct it. You're going to have to, um, actually give someone an offer and do that because how you should do market research essentially is you should develop some kind of free offer so that you'll give in exchange for the market research. So that could be 
um, a 20 minute strategy session. It could be a 30 minute coaching session. It could be um, an audit of their graphics. Okay. It could be a lot of different things. Um, it should be connected to your business and to the offerings that you're developing. Um, you know, because if you're a mindset coach, you shouldn't be giving away sales strategy sessions because that doesn't make sense for your business. So you, it needs to make sense with your business. Okay. Um, so you want to develop that and then you want to market it as like, you know, I'm giving this away and then explain that it's in exchange for the market research questions. Typically, you should be giving a little bit more than you're getting. So like, for example, if you have 15 minutes worth of questions, you should be giving away a 20 minute session. You want to give away a little bit more than you're getting to make it worth the other person's time. And I see so many people just doing market research. Like, can you help me? Can you help me? I want to talk to you ladies. Can you help me? That's not the way to do it. Because why should somebody help you? Like, why should somebody go out of their way to help you for free just because they're nice? I'm not saying that that never happens or, um, you know, that you can't help somebody out. But just in general, people need an incentive and they need a reason to want to help you. And, you know, you want to also give something to people who are helping you. You know, nobody wants to work for free or any of that stuff. So you shouldn't expect people to do that for you either. Um so you need to give something away and then through but you're actually going to benefit in the end because you're going to get to first test out you know and like i said it should be related to the offers you're developing so you should you can test out you know that offer and that thing and see if it's something that's working for people and it's something that they enjoy and something that's helping or not and then you also get a chance to practice your skill so if you're a coach you get a chance to practice coaching in a in a very low pressure situation and you know, look at what you need to get better at. Look at what you need to improve. You can make all those tweaks then before you're even putting an offer out there, before you're even you know making something. Okay, so you really need to do it because it will help. It will only help you. It will only benefit you. Like I learned so much from the the market research I did. I was giving away free coaching. Oh my gosh! Like I had so many things I needed to kind of tweak and work on, and I did, um, which helped me then when I actually had offers because I wasn't making those same mistakes. So you know, you need it, it will only help you to give away those coaching sessions, um, and it will also just further connect you to the person. If you've coached them, you know they're going to be more likely to buy from you in the future if they enjoyed it. Okay, so you need to do market research. Um, and then you also, along with this, need to get visible. And this is not an overnight thing. This is not something you can do in one day. Um, and the market research has to do with that too because you want to get a little bit visible ideally before you put it out there because if you're just a random person, nobody's going to respond to your posts. You know, you need to be putting yourself out there. This probably means on social media. It does depend on your business a little bit, but assuming you're an online-based business, we're talking about social media. So this might be Facebook groups, this might be on Periscope, this might be on Twitter, this might be on Instagram, you know, whatever. You should be ideally having kind of like one main platform you're focusing on and like a sub platform. Um, you don't want to be trying to make things happen on five different platforms at once because you will burn out and it will not work. Um, so, you know, you want to get visible there though. So, you know, you want to ideally, I'd say for um, one to two weeks, you know, start posting consistently. Start, you know, if you're in Facebook, post in the groups three to five times a day in three to five different groups. If you're on Instagram, you know, start posting multiple times a day. Start tagging people. Start direct messaging people. Start following hashtags and liking photos and doing all that stuff. Um, you know, same for any other platform. Basically, you know, the tricks of the trade of getting visible. That's what you need to be doing. Um, you need to be doing that for a week or two before you put this out before you put out your market research um, but even during and after like you always need to stay visible but this is what you need to do is you need to get yourself out there and get people to know who you who you are too many people make the mistake of just putting out their offer their market research when nobody knows who they are nobody knows what their business is nobody knows what they do so they're not gonna buy from you because they don't know you you haven't been around you know what I mean nobody knows who you are so you need to make yourself visible um, okay so get visible and, you know, do whatever you need to do to do that. And it depends on the platform. But, you know, if it's Facebook groups, posting, if it's Periscope, you know, going live every day, going on other people's broadcasts, giving them hearts, all that stuff. Okay? All right. Now is the time where we're going to get into developing the offer. Um, because, you know, through your market research, through all this, you should be learning, you know, what people – are actually want and need and if you know the things you're making are something people want and need or not and you know making all those tweaks based on the research based on the experiences that you're having 
and the visibility even. You know, what kind of posts, what things are people responding to the most? What things are people ignoring? Um, you know, all of that can give you an, an idea. So it should probably be something small. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going from zero to 60, like, you know, going from nothing to having a 90 day package. Like that's usually not gonna work because again, you need to build up the credibility now. You know, now that you have the visibility, now you gotta get the credibility. And people are probably not gonna work with a coach who just showed up a couple weeks ago. You know what I mean? You need to like start building up your clientele and your Rolodex and you know, getting people that you've worked with. And the thing is too, is that people that you can use all of the smaller things to get people, those will are the people that become your long-term clients, okay? So, you know, you can use all those processes to get them to buy more from you later. But, you know, you can't just start out with, you know, 90 day, six month packages because nobody's going to do that if they haven't worked with you and they don't know who you are. So you need to build trust. It's a whole like you need to build trust in a business. So, you know, ask yourself if that's something you would do. Probably not. So, um, okay, so, you know, developing, so a small offer. So something that, you know, is like, an, like I did an intensive. It could be something like that. It could be um some kind of like social media audit if you're working in social media so you know where you're walking looking at all of their social media platforms and giving them an in-depth analysis of where they are um you know whatever it is for you i would say i would say an intensive is a good way to start if you're a coach um you could also do um some kind of like 30 minute or 60 minute assessment or something like that but I do think intensives are great, but you know, also you're gonna see through your market research if that's something you know that would work. Um, so developing your also develop the offer, you know, create it, make it like I said, don't make it too big, don't make it a 90 day package, make it something that's small, um, and it should be like in terms of price, it should cost a couple hundred dollars, like somewhere in that realm, um, and so it should be, you know, you don't want to be doing these for peanuts, so don't, you know puts them out there for 50 bucks, but, you know, don't make it like, you know, $9.99 your first offer. Make it, you know, something more reasonable than that. <laughs> so it should be like a couple hundred dollars. Um, and yeah, I mean, in terms of price, shouldn't be too high, shouldn't be too low. A couple hundred dollars is usually, like if it's 90 minutes or something, a couple hundred dollars is a good place to start. Um, so you want to develop that and you want it to be fair and all of that. And then, you know, you want to put it out there. And then the way you put it out there is very important, though, because for, there's a couple of principles that you need to follow with this. Okay, so you want to put out your offer. So, you, you know, you want to do all that mindset work and stuff. And you even want to give yourself a deadline. Um, you can put a deadline out there as well, but you want to give yourself a deadline first and be like, okay, I'm selling out you know, all my spots in two days or whatever it is. Like in two days, like literally there's no choice. Like it's not a choice of like, am I going to do it? Is this going to happen? It's just like, this is going to happen. I already decided like, there's no like plan B. It's just like, I am selling out. Like this is happening. There's no excuse. I am making it happen. Okay. So you have to get on that. You can't just be like, I don't know. You know, I'm going to see if people like this and you know, we'll go from there. Like you, no, 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 no. You need to have committed that you're doing this, this is happening, and that's it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, um, okay. So then you need to make, you do need to put the scarcity though. So, because you want to have a certain number of spots, you don't just want to be like 90 minute intensive. Like, you need to have a certain number of spots, you know, three spots, five spots. I always like three um, for things, especially if you're new, you know, um, but a certain number of spots. And that's it. And you really need to stick to that too. Don't be one of those people that says there's only, you know, five spots and then they magically open up two more. You know what I mean? Like stick to it because you don't want people to think that that's you and that you're that kind of coach who's just using dirty scarcity tactics. Like it needs to be real, guys. Okay. Um, so you need to put that out there. Um, the scarcity. And then, you know, you also want to talk about the outcomes, talk about the solutions. Don't just say, I have this product, do you want to buy it? You need to talk about what they're going to get. What's the value that they're going to get from you? What are they going to walk away having? That's what you need to ask yourself. And then you need to use your ideal client and write about it in the way that would best appeal to them. Um, okay, so that's what, so you need to get really, really clear on that. If you don't know, you need to go back to the drawing board because you need to know what people are getting from your offers or else they have no reason to buy. Um, so then you need to start posting that and, you know, where you've been active, where you've gotten yourself visible. Um, and this should maybe be about three weeks out. So, you know, if you got visible your first two weeks, you did your market research and now you're putting it out there, maybe about three weeks. Um, this is like three weeks later. 
um, or maybe about maybe three to four, but like three to four. Um, and so you, you need to put the offer out there. You need to have a deadline. You need to have a certain number of spots, all that. And then you need to reach out to people. And this is where people get afraid because they're afraid to actually reach out. They're afraid to get on the phone with people. They're afraid to private message. I'm not saying to just randomly spam people and private message them about your offer. No. People, but the people that like, you know, if they like the um, post offer that you have, if they're commenting on it, um, you should message them. You should follow up with them in a message. And you should, you know, just make yourself open and say, you know, hey, I noticed that you're interested in this offer. I'd love to be able to work with you. Um, you know, here's the link to um, purchase. You know, there's only a couple spots. Um, I'd really love to have you. And let me know if you have any questions or something like that. You know, or, you know, you can even go into it like, you know, I noticed that you, you know, liked my post. If they liked it and didn't comment it, I would go a little bit less intense and you know just say like i saw that you liked my post i wanted to really thank you for your support um i would love to be able to work with you you know in this intensive um and you know and you might even look into them a little bit to see like how you could help them and you know let me know if you have questions and you know i and you know here's where you can go and get it or whatever um but don't be afraid because those messages were how i sold out like those messages you know people there was people um, who came to me and who were like, ah, I don't think I'm interested. Um, and then literally a couple hours later, they were like, okay, I think I want to buy. Um, <laughs> and I had somebody else who initially um, wanted to put down a deposit and do it later, and then she ended up wanting to do it the next day and paid in full. So, um, you know, you have to really just make it happen. Don't be afraid to talk to people. The worst they can say is no. So, you know, don't go spamming people, but people that express interest in your offer, absolutely talk to them. Um, absolutely talk to them and, you know, answer any questions they have and, like, be there as a resource for them. And that's how you're really going to sell is through those personal connections. It really comes down to personal connections, guys. Like, you know, there's so many people who are just afraid to, you know, get on the phone to actually talk to people or, you know, to send somebody a message or whatever. But that's that's how you're going to connect with people because, you know, if you're just some fancy person on the Internet, nobody cares. Like, you need to actually be like a real person one-to-one -one with somebody, you know, just like I am right now here with you, you know, we're one-to-one, -one. you're seeing my face, you're hearing my voice, I'm a real person, I'm not just some figure floating around on the internet, um, and then they're going to see that you're legit, that you're trustworthy, again, it's like building that trust, building that trust, building that trust, okay, so that is what I have for you in terms of, you know, how can you put your first offer out in 24 hours and sell out Okay, or sell out in 24 hours, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not put it out, you can't do all this in 24 hours, but um, you might be able to if you've already done something. Like if you already have gotten one-to-one -one help, you've already done the mindset, you've already done the market research, then yeah, you can do this in 24 hours. But you know, if you haven't, you need to do those things. Um, again, you can't leapfrog over steps in business. Um, so I also wanna tell you all that I have another offer because now I am ready for 90 day clients. <laughs> I'm ready for you. Okay. So I am offering now a 90 day VIP intensive coaching package. I'm calling it intensive coaching package because it is intensive. Um, so it's 90 days of you and I working together. I've shown you here. I've shown you what I can do. I've shown you what I have done. Um, you know, I'm a business astrology coach, so I take that approach, looking at the inside out, looking at who you are in order to help you in your business, okay? So that is central to what I do. That is how I work. I'm different than other coaches because of that. I don't even need to explain why. Um, that makes me different. So the 90-day package, you know, so if you're somebody who is struggling in their business, who's struggling with their purpose, who doesn't know what direction to go in next, who feels stuck, who feels lost, who feels like they're not, you know, bringing the money they thought they would, or, you know, they're not, um, you know, booking the kind of clients that they thought they were, or, you know, they just don't feel connected to their offers or to their business. This is for you because this is for somebody who really, really needs this support and is really ready to like put their business into the stratosphere. Like I'm not here to work with people who don't know if they're ready and who don't know that they want it. You have to know that you want it. Like that's who, you know, I can't help you. This is not for somebody who's unsure. You have to know that you want it and be ready to take off and be ready to do the work that 
you know, takes you from here all the way up. So you have to be ready for that and you have to be committed. I don't just work with anybody. <laughs> if you think I just work with anybody for 90 days, you're crazy because that is far from true, okay? So for 90 days, you're going to be getting 24 coaching calls. That's right, 24, okay? Not, not 12, not one a week. You're going to get two a week. And from that, you're going to be able to get the most out of coaching. It's going to kind of be like six months of coaching versus 90 days because essentially you get to use – me twice a week so if you do everything you need to do in three or four days when we talk again then guess what you get a whole nother coaching session with me and a whole other assignments and a whole other things to do and new support so it's not just once a week that you get to talk to me okay so you get 24 coaching calls okay so on top of the 24 coaching calls you also get a 90 minute astrology intensive that's right at the very beginning I will do an astrology intensive with you to see where you are to see what your alignment is to you know, see what your purpose is, and ask anybody I've done an astrology reading for. Seriously, like go and ask them. It they are epic. My, I know my readings are awesome because women tell me that they are. So you need to get on this because these readings, like seriously, this will ch even just this will change your business. Like even just the ninety minute intensive will change your business, and you're getting that and all the coaching on top of it. So, you know, and that, by the way, is a $397 value right now. $397 is how much my intensives are worth if you're booking an intensive. So um, you're getting that on top of everything else. So 90 minutes, you know, we're gonna get really clear on who you are, what your goals are. We're gonna set the intention for the next 90 days, have two coaching calls a week, and then you're also gonna get, you know, full access to me and my network and my resources. You're gonna, you know, email support, phone support, texting, all of that, of course, you know, I'm going to be there for you. And, you know, you're also going to get um, the option for recorded calls. If you want recorded calls, I'm going to send you weekly summaries of what we worked on. I'm going to send you journal topics, you know, all of that kind of stuff, as well as personalized self-care and business strategies. And on top of all that, I'm going to give you access to all my social media materials and marketing that I've developed over the years in my first business in social media marketing. So, you know, all the resources you could dream of with that I have for you. So editorial calendars or, you know, how to write copy or how to do SEO. And like, I can help you with all of that. And I will. So that is the 90 day VIP package I'm offering. Um, I know that you're ready and I know that there's so many of you who need this and who need this clarity in your business and who need to get clear on your offers and your intentions and who you are and how you're going to stand out, how you're going to stand out in a world full of cookie cutter coaches, you know, cause you're not meant for that. You're meant for bigger things than that. You're not meant to be somebody who's just meandering out there who has no idea what they're doing and who's just throwing offers out there left and right and holding something sticks. You're better than that. You're meant for bigger things than that. And, you know, I would love to help you along the way. So if you're interested, you can apply for a discovery call at bit.ly slash discovery call with Aaron. Um, I'm also going to leave the link in the replay. Bit.ly slash discovery call with Aaron. Fill out the form. And if you are a good fit, I will get in touch and we will do a discovery call and work together. So thank you all for tuning in and watching. I love every single one of you giving you purple kisses, <laughs> and I will see you very soon, and I'm excited to work with you.